Hey kids, it's Dr. James and Dr. James Blaine. So we're looking at Crater of Source. Now this dinosaur in particular is kind of confusing to me because um, we only have one bone of it. I will tell you this, the name Crater Source actually means crater or bull lizard. It was discovered in 18, or described in 1874 um, in Britain, now in Britain, and it lived in the early Cretaceous period. So that's unusual because when you think Stegosaur, you normally think Late Jurassic. Uh, there are a, 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 at least think three or four genera that possibly are second source that survived into Cretaceous period, one of course in China and, and others in, in Europe. And so in general it's a confusing figure because let's see with the official scissors address of James, we will free the beef and okay. And so it's unusual that they found one bone, a vertebra. And initially it was thought to be a part of the cranium, the head's part of the head, but it's only one bone. And this is a general critique, or well, I don't want to critique too much, but in general, I'm, I, I'm glad that the Jurassic World line is not making T-Rex, Triceratops, well, they are making those dinosaurs over and over again, but they're also making unusual species. But that there, to me, uh, in my professional opinion, there's a gap between like the general dinosaurs we get over and over again, what we probably want to see more of and these guys. I mean like these guys is like Quilmethorus, this one, they find one or two bones and they it's a name in a book somewhere or a paper really. Not even usually in books. And so they're making these toys based on one animal, one one bone. And that's kind of weird to me. When we do have other specimen or other other uh, species or genres known, we have more of the animal. So with that being said, I'll explain why it's weird to me, professionally speaking. Is that first of all the animal, this figure has four toes in each foot. Now that is uh, incorrect for stegosaurs in general. Stegosaurs have three toes, but it seems to be in the Jurassic World line, that's kind of a thing. The stegosaurus has four toes, the hesperosaurus has four toes, and the kentrosaurus from Africa has four toes. So they, they seem to not really care about that part. Uh, with the four limbs, they have four as well. And I think it's a thing where humans were like, well, we have five and five, you know, they should, you know, goats have two and two, good clothes and all that. Maybe they should have four and four, but dinosaurs are different because they have to have different number of toes and fingers sometimes, and the length of them are, are different. So, for example, for Stegosaurus, again, this one, I've done a video of Stegosaurus already, but this one has, like, generic-looking elephant-esque feet in a reptile form, whereas we know Stegosaurus, the first two toes are really long, with the claws, the second two are small nubs, and the third, sorry, the first two, long claws, Third and fourth are shorter with little kind of like hoofy nubs. And then a fifth one is like a little nub in, in the skin. There's no claw in there, right? And so we know that for Stegosaurus. This guy is given the general four, actually it would be technically these four, four finger uh, look with, with all the same size claws. Another thing to point out is that it has this half plates, half spike thing going on. Uh, we don't know that. Uh, we can look at the skeleton and say, well, it's a Stegosaur based on X, Y features of the bone. But... We, you know, stegosaurs have a mixture of plates and spikes. Now, this is a pretty good guess. I mean, if you're going to just take a shot in the dark. But to give you perspective on this, in North America, we have stegosaurs, in late Jurassic North America, stegosaurs and hesperosaurs, right? These two were not contemporaries. This is upper or later Morse information. This is lower Morse information. So they didn't live exactly the same time. In Africa, again, we have kentrosaurs. And, this, and where these guys are mainly plates and then spikes in the end, Cantrosaurus in Africa, or Tanzania particularly, is more akin to what we associate with Jurassic Stegosaurus. Have plates, have spikes, right? Uh, we have our guys from China who all have their own video. So we got a Spinosaurus here. So they all have like the plates and spikes. Some have shoulder points too. So these guys, are, again, are something that we are, we have more of these for, for the most part. And so we have an idea that there is a plate to spike ratio. Uh, but with these guys, we don't know. And so there, there, and there's two things going on. Either one, uh, in the future, someone will find more of what we call Cratersaurus, and then we can go from there. I don't think they'll ever, unless, they, unless that happens, I don't think there'll ever be any more toys of this animal. Because unless they find, because there, there are a lot of dinosaurs that are, or dinosaur published names, that are a few bones here or there. And sometimes those bones are, are later on realized to be a part of another group. And sometimes we just don't find anything else of that animal. So it's just a name in a book somewhere or a paper somewhere. And so Caratosaur is, is on that kind of line. Like you could, they could find more of it and go like, here's this thing. Here's more of it, more toys of it. 
or it just kind of sits in kind of waist back to this 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 kind of like limbo -y state right there, right? Uh, as far as at least from China, North America, Africa, there are other, and I use mainly the Jurassic World look. They have they have a lot of stegosaurs. Got, I I must give them credit. They are giving a lot of attention to stegosaurs, stegosaurs, and many other groups too, like the abelosaurs and all that. Which again, next week is carnotaurus. I have, I have a, it's gonna be great. And so uh, here's Mar Maragaya from the Iberian Peninsula, which is a really really weird interpretation of this animal. But again, it's a European stegosaur. Uh, now the other two, there are not there are no Jurassic World figures of. So this one is the only one of this I could ever find. It is a collecte. Is it collecte? Let's see. No, it's uh, Procon. So P R O C O N Procon is the name of the company. I keep forgetting that company exists because they don't really put out a lot out. But what they do, it's like really unusual stuff. And this, if the name is Lexavosaurus. Now this is an animal I have never done a video on. I never really mentioned very much. But again, it's a, it's a very. In some paleontologists think it's a um, dubious genus. Uh, but if a Jurassic Stegosaurus, really well known, not the older textbooks. Uh, then we have this guy here. This is a, the first Stegosaur name actually. Uh, Decreus. The I have trouble saying the name. D a c e n t r u r u s. Dacentrus. Dacentrus. Right. So this is the first thing I sort of named. It, 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 the British Museum is this big specimen of it that Richard Owen had worked on and everything. Of the guy who coined the word dinosaur. So these are not quite contemporaries because they are Jurassic and he is, this is Cretaceous. But these are essentially the animals that would be the ancestry, the relatives of this animal. So considering that they have spikes and things and plates and mixture too, that's probably what we're looking at here for this guy. Uh, as far as the figure itself, uh, it's really it's really neat. Like I said, it's... If you're, if you're hurting stegosaurs. Okay. So, overall, I like that, I mean, like I said, color is entirely a guess. We, now, you do notice there's like a tan, like belly, and it's like a darker yellowy mustard and then a brown on the back. That, in general, is called counter shading. So, counter shading is when you have darker skin on top of the animal um, and light on the bottom. For a great white shark, for example, it has a black back and a white belly. So if you're in the deeper water looking up, you see bright sunlight and a white belly. It blends in. If you're looking down into the deep abyss, you see a black back with a black bottom. It blends in. When you are on land, in general, you want to have the back be something that kind of blends in. Because no, this guy is only about uh, four feet tall. Um, most, I mean, we, we think it's okay. The, the weird thing for us in America is that we look at stegosaurus and go, yeah, yeah, that's the norm. But as you see, most stegosaurs have mainly plates and spikes, and they're not that big, actually. I mean, they are long. They're like 20 feet long, 15 feet long. But these guys are normally like five feet tall, which is, it's kind of weird because humans are like five foot, five, six, you know, all that. But the thing is, for an animal on all four, it's pretty long and heavy, but it's just, it's plates are only so tall. So it's going to be kind of blending in. If it's only this tall in the Jurassic period, it's going to be blending in very well. So you want uh, darker colors on top to kind of blend in from predators looking up, but also um, changing grass, or not grass, there was no grass this time, but the change in vegetation, basically. Uh, so as far as articulation goes, the head goes up and down, the tail rotates this way, which is more of a, probably an engineering thing. The legs go up and down, it can, it can gallop. They don't really gallop in real life, their body can't do that. And for the, now they used to have the dinosaur code on the foot. Uh, they can do the digital part. You, it's actually one of the plates you pull it out and there's your DNA code. And you can scan it and look at, you, have this guy in your computer or phone or something. I don't know, I don't do that part. But the point is, um, let's see. And so you can see the little beak there. Often when I teach kids, they're always surprised that, except for the sauropods, uh, all the herbivore dinosaurs have beaks, like the Ornistians, the bird hip dinosaurs, the uh, Ceratopsians, the horns, the Stegosaurs, of course, the Ankylosaurs, the Hadrosaurs, the Iguanodons. They all have beaks and things. So um, it's kind of, the, the irony is the Ornistians are the bird hip dinosaurs that include the horn dinosaurs, duck bills, you know. But the bird, they're called bird hip dinosaurs, but birds came from the Thoracians, the lizard hip dinosaurs, or predators, like thoropods. Kind of a weird thing there. But what's going on here is that this guy actually has a beak. And I would say, kids, like, why, why would I have a beak? And the answer is very simple. We have forks and knives as humans uh, to break our food down before we eat to our mouth. The beak is that for them. It's a fork and knife to cut and chomp the food down to a certain size before it gets into the teeth to be ground up or swallowed, right? And so that's kind of the purpose of that, of that overall. And that's pretty much it for this guy. Uh, are there Cretaceous uh, uh, stegosaurs? 
you know, the same time, around the same time, this guy's living, uh, notosaurs. So we have the ankylosaurs, the big ones, the armor like a turtle with club tails. The ones with clubs show up later on. They're late Cretaceous. In the early Cretaceous, we have nodosaurs. These are the same kind of animal, but they have more spiky bits, and they, they don't have a club on their tail. So around the time this guy's living, the stegosaur line, because there were nodosaurs in the Jurassic period, they were the minority, and then stegosaurs are the majority. By Cretaceous period, the stegosaurs are a minority. There are less of them. And then there's more notosaurs. So they're not, I'm not saying they replaced them, but they kind of did in that role in the environment. So Cratosaurus is the last, or one of the last of the stegosaurus line, the stegosaurid line, basically. As, um, you know, which is a big deal because people think of dinosaur extinction as this event happens and they're all wiped out. But they're coming and going the entire time, right? And so, like I said, Tashburnosaurus was here in late Jurassic, and then Stegosaurus kind of replaced it, or maybe evolved into it. A lot of debate there. But overall, you're seeing that change in time. So what you're seeing here, then when this guy shows up, it's the last, one of the last of the Stegosaurus. And then the Notosaurus come in. And then even they are partially replaced by the Ankylosaurus, right, for the end. And so that is this guy in a nutshell. Craterosaurs get one. They're kind of neat. And who knows? This could be the only one they ever make because I doubt they'll find more. I don't know why I feel that way, but I doubt they'll find more of these guys. That being said, I'll see you guys next week with Carnotaurus.